How's it going, Vault Hunters, and welcome back to another Borderlands 2 Legendary Weapons Guide. Today, we're going to be going after the legendary Vladov grenade known as the Stormfront. Now, the Stormfront can only drop an electric element and is a base game item, which means no DLCs are required to obtain this item. Now, the red text for this item reads, sometimes lightning does strike twice, and if I had to make any recommendations for Vault Hunters to use this on, I would say Salvador and Krieg, which I will explain more near the end of the video, but this item is very viable on all Vault Hunters. And as always, remember that the name of your Stormfront may be different to mine, but will always be some variation of the Stormfront. Now to get our very own Stormfront, we first need to go to our nearest fast travel station and head to the location known as the Bloodshot Stronghold. Now, once you've loaded into the area, open up your map, scroll out a bit, and within the red circle, we will find a group of enemies known as the Splinter Group. Now, before we can fight the Splinter Group, we first need to progress through the main campaign and complete the main quest known as a Damn Fine Rescue. Once that is turned in, speak to Tannis in Sanctuary, and she will give you a side quest known as the Splinter Group. Once you've completed this quest, head back to Sanctuary, turn it into Tannis, and the Splinter Group have now become guaranteed spawn enemies in the location shown earlier. Now, all four members of the Splinter Group, that being Lee, Mike, Dan, and Raph, have a 10% chance at dropping you the Stormfront, and they are red HP health bar rat type enemies, which means fire is very effective against them. Now, the Stormfront is going to have one additional dedicated drop source, and that is going to come from an enemy known as Master Gi from the Captain Scarlet Pirate DLC. At a whopping 1.7% chance at dropping you the Stormfront, I highly recommend you just stick to the Splinter Group due to Master Gi 1 being a raid boss, as well as being locked behind the DLC, especially with the super low drop rate at 1.7%, and he is also one of the more annoying bosses to farm unless you do a certain glitch to instant kill him. So I very much recommend you just stick to the Splinter Group due to all four of them having that 10% chance at dropping you the item, and it'll just be faster in general. Also, just a little thing to note that when fighting the Splinter Group, they all come out one at a time in like little phases, and if you do not defeat them like immediately and you get them to half HP, they will teleport out and will be swapped in with another member until you go through all four of them, and then once the fourth member disappears, all four of them will then spawn in at the same time and will fight you until you defeat them. Now, the closest non-unique item in the game to a Stormfront will be a purple Vladov grenade with matching parts, prefix, and element. Now, at first glance, we can see that the Legendary has superior damage over its purple counterpart, but in every other stat, they are identical. Now, with most item cards or descriptions, they don't always tell the full story of the item's capability, and that would be the unique Legendary effect. Now, in the Stormfront's case, its unique legendary effect is that upon detonation, you will have the main Tesla coil that will then spawn five additional mini versions of the Tesla coil that will damage enemies within a radius. The five mini versions of the Tesla coils do less damage than the main primary Tesla coil. All the Tesla coils can have their damage boosted by sources such as skills, class mods, and relics. Now something to note is that this item is capable in dropping in all four throwable parts, that being longbowed, lobbed, homing, and rubberized. Now that we know everything that we need to know about this item, let's break down the god roll. So the first part we're going to be looking for is going to be the delivery or the prefix of this item, which is going to be the longbow. This is going to maximize the amount of time it takes from the grenade, leaving our hand to the target. The next part we're going to be looking for is going to be the fuse time. In this case, we're going to be looking for a 0.0, .0 fuse time, also known as a trigger grade of zero. The next stat we're going to be looking at is going to be blast radius. In this case, we're going to be looking for 700. That is the highest it can go. So the next stat we're going to be looking at is going to be the overall base damage or grenade damage, and that is going to be a damage grade of 7, this is the highest you can get it to go. And the final stat we're going to be looking at is going to be the elemental damage or the electrocute damage, and this is going to be a shot grade of 4. So that about does it for me. 
As usual, I always try and show these items off in their most bare bones state so you as a player can determine whether or not it's worth your time and effort to farm it for your character. I had to make any recommendations. I really recommend characters like Krieg and Salvador due to them being able to either offhand a moxie weapon for healing or Krieg has a skill known as Elemental Empathy, I believe it's called, where you get healed off of elemental damage. Plus, if you stack it with Bloodlust, the damage that this thing can do and the healing you will receive back will make it very hard to die and just give you a constant sustain of healing. You also can run this on all the characters for healing as well, but you can also go Maya Engage for some of their electrical skills or just elemental buffs. So it's all around a really good item for shield shredding and just passive healing if you have a moxie weapon in hand. So I, I recommend going after it. And I know for a long time that the community favorite like grenade for healing would be the chain lightning and grog nozzle or lightning bolt and grog nozzle because it was just did so much damage it was just instantaneous and there was like no downtime between the heal but this may be a contender where you may not get that burst immediately but if you throw that grenade and there's an enemy in it and you're taking damage you're just gonna keep healing up immediately and it's only one grenade instead of potentially having to spam several but uh, that pretty much does it for me. I hope all you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you next time, Vault Hunters.